I'll be thinking. Did the lobsters come? An hour ago. Good. And the melons? This morning. Are they ripe? The smell is incredible. Excellent, my dear. Excellent. Oh, what a morning. Callers every five minutes. There's another one. Oh, don't use that one. It's discoloured. Here, find another. Understand me, Tinker. Everything is in the serving. But everything. Everything, sir. But everything. Oh, I'm worn out with callers all morning. It's too much. But you can't just send her away. I scarcely know the woman. Besides, I have a sick headache. It's too rude, Mama. Ask them up. One gets no consideration from children these days. Shall I bring you some eau de cologne, my pet? All I want is a little peace and quiet for five minutes. Is it too much to ask? After all, it's her name, Delia. Now, if she doesn't want any more callers, why should she see them? Well, these will be the last, my pet, I promise you. Ah, oh, Madame Karagina. How nice, how nice. Count Rostov. And this is? My daughter, Julie. She so wanted to come and meet the Rostovs. Quite right, quite right. Sit down, my dear. Many happy returns, Countess. Oh, so nice of you to call. It's been so long, hasn't it? Since, um... The Razumovsky ball. Ah, Razumovsky, yes. Uh, you know my daughter, Vera? And my cousin and good friend, Princess Drubetskaya. Of course. Oh, my God, Have you got a sweet? We called on our way here at Count Bezuhoff's. He's very bad, you know. It's even doubtful whether he'll last the night. Yes, we heard. So sad. Anna's related, you know. You know Count Brzukov? No, not really. But I know his niece, Katish, who lives with him. Oh, Katish. She was so touched that we'd call. I'm sure. Naturally, she's deeply upset. Of course, of course. Who wouldn't be? Still, it's a ripe old age. Oh, he's lived his life well enough. A good life, devoted to public works. He set such an example to the young ones, don't you think, Princess Drubetskaya? Oh, an example I trust they wouldn't follow. His reputation, let it be said, is notorious. Now, Anna, the children... Oh, Mama. He has lost count of the number of his offspring. Such a handsome man. I saw him last year. I never saw so fine a figure. Nor did many ladies to their cost. And who then, Princess, do you think will inherit? Well, that I can't say. I know Prince Vasily Kuragin is the next heir through his wife, but I think there's much competition from the young man, Pierre. But he's illegitimate. Well, so are they all, I have told you. Oh, but such a profligate, such a wastrel. Did you hear what happened in Petersburg? Of course we heard, my dear. I heard he tied a policeman to a bear and threw them both in the river. Oh. <laughs> that must have been very funny. Count, how can you laugh at such a thing? Oh, no, no, of course not. Still, a policeman swimming on the back of a bear. <laughs> That's uh, 40, 40 rubles you owe me. Yes. Do you want to go and play? Well, of course, I'm going to win it all back from you. Deal. Very well, if you want me to ruin you, I will. I'll take every ruble you've got. Be my father you ruin, not me. It's his money I play with. How long are you staying in Moscow? Until they've read your father's will, then I'm off. This place is deadly. What are you here for? Now, what do you think I'm here for? I don't know. Well, my father covers every possibility. I'm here in case your father doesn't die. <laughs> well, how would it look, Pierre, if by some miracle your father recovered and I wasn't here paying my respects, eh? Well, how would it look? It would look callous, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, of course it would, you idiot. It'd look as if I didn't care whether he lived or died. And then, if he had left me something, he might change his mind and leave me out altogether. <laughs> he 
really are on a winning streak, aren't you? That's uh, 40, 40, 45 rubles you owe me. Look, I've got an idea. Whatever you get, you share with me. Whatever I get, I share with you. Well, that way we're both sure of getting something. Unless neither of us gets anything. What nothing you talking about? The will, man. You think you stand to inherit more than me, don't you? Uh, are you playing cards or not? Yes. Hmm? I'll play you for your share, you play me for mine. Go on, cut. Highest card wins. Oh, go on, man, cut. None of it you made me Why feel. not? Well. Why not? Well, show some feeling, Anatole. Goodness sake, so... Feeling? Yes. What on earth has feeling got to do with it? Do you feel something for him? I don't know. Maybe I ought to. Well, what's feeling for him got to do with spending his money? Oh, God, this place would drive me mad. It's like a, a mausoleum. How do you stand it? I do you find to do all day? Time seems to pass. Have you found some girls? Yes, a few. <laughs> Look, I'm going to give a party when I get back to Petersburg. Will you come? I can't go back for a month. It won't be for a month. I've spent my allowance. Uh, but in a month. And I'll get some girls. You know, the real thing. Oh, God, I could do with one now. Can't you do anything but play cards all day long? Well, of course, Father. Do with what now? Hmm? You've only been here five minutes already. This room is like a stew. Do you think it's seemly playing cards in the house of a dying man? I don't see the connection, Father. I brought you here to pay your respects to Count Bezuhoff, not idle away your time and my money gambling. How can I pay my respects if he's unconscious? <laughs> I sometimes feel you're utterly beyond reach. And you, my friend, are not far from that situation yourself. That's your father upstairs. Does that mean nothing to you? Uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Perhaps you should, and quickly. He's very nearly dead. <laughs> is, there something, is there something I can do? Yes, go out and get some fresh air. You don't have to hang around the house all day. <laughs> say, say he uh, sends send for me. If he does, you can be sent for. That's a pity you didn't tie him to a bear and throw them both in the river. Turning the whole house upside down. <laughs> well, what would you do? <laughs> well, it's her name day too. The children have to enjoy oh, themselves. Spoil her, Ilya. Look at her body. Oh, no. Spoil her, who spoils her. How do you do, my dear? Many happy returns of the day. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Can't you children come into a room properly? Can't you see there are visitors? Well, come on, what's the joke, Sherry? <laughs> It seems to have something to do with the doll. What's her name, my dear? Is she your little girl? <laughs> She's not my little girl. <laughs> She's my <laughs> What would you do with them? They're too old to box on the ears. Perhaps I'm just too old to do it. Boris, dear, I would have thought you might have exercised some restraint. But how would it suit you to rush about in your uniform? I'm sorry, Mother. Now, children, this is Madame Karagina and her daughter, Julie. These are my sons, Nikolai, Petya, my niece, Sonia, who has always lived with us. And this is Boris, Princess Drivitskaya's son, and Count Petsuhoff's godchild, as we were saying earlier. I like your uniform. Thank you. I do so love to see a young man in uniform. That is perhaps because you've no sons. On the contrary, I have one son, a charming boy. He, too, is joining the army. Will you be joining the army? I I've joined. <laughs> Boris joins, so he has to throw up university and join as well. Well, oh, there's friendship for you. It's got <laughs> nothing to do with friendship, Father. I told you I want to make it a career. Career? They're all Napoleon mad. They think they can all rise from ensign to emperor. 
I'm not thinking of Napoleon, except that he'll get a drubbing when he comes up against the Russian army. He'll find out we're not a lot of Germans, Austrians and Poles. Bravo! Well, it's just that I'm not cut out to be a diplomat or a government clerk. However, if you insist, I'll stay here. When did I ever insist? I think uniform will suit you. Well, thank you. But that really isn't the point. All boys want to be soldiers. Neither is that. Come now, children, sit down. It's rude to stand about as though you're not going to well, stay. Uh, now, Sonia. Yeah? Shall I order you the carriage? Oh, yes, dear. Let's go and tell them. Excuse me. Do you know the Aharovs? Yes. I thought so. There was a party there on Thursday. Someone mentioned you. It was fun. You should have been there. I wish I had been. Excuse me. Children. Uh, please excuse me. And there are their hearts on their sleeves for everyone to see. Yes. How much suffering, how much worry we go through before we can at last rejoice in them. May I go out, please? Who asked you to come in? Nobody. Then why are you asking to go out? <laughs> <laughs> come here. Now then, what was the big joke outside there? Sonia stole Natasha's doll and hid it up her skirt. Natasha pulled it out and said Sonia had had a baby and she was going to tell Mama. Sonia, please stay still. Go away. Leave me alone. Go back to that, that Julie Karagina. But I don't want to. Don't you understand? I was just being polite. Oh, how well mannered you are, certainly. But one has to be polite. To her. To me, you can be insulting. When was I insulting? You said you wished you'd been at the Aharovs on Thursday. Well? That was the evening we played the clavichord and sang together. And you said how wonderful it had been. Look, I only said I would like to have been at the Aharovs out of politeness. Really, what do you think I was doing? You liked her. I could tell. I didn't. You did. I could see the look on your face. Oh, Sonia, please. <laughs> I swear, I was just making polite conversation. How could you imagine otherwise? After all, she isn't even pretty. If she'd been pretty, it would have been different, I suppose. No, 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 of course not. Sonia, you must believe me. How can you torture us both over such a trivial thing? Hmm? We mean everything to each other. Didn't we swear it the other night? We said there would never be anyone between us. Don't you remember? Say you forgive me. Come on, please. Well, I forgive you. doing there come out I waited for you I thought you'd follow me oh, well I had to order the carriage for mama she's going to see old Count Bazuchov and she wants me to go with her why oh because she thinks he may leave me some money I know he won't but you know mama would you like to kiss me <laughs> you fool Natasha did you like it Yes, of course I did. I didn't feel anything. I must have been too nervous. <laughs> Do you love me? Really? Well, you know I do. But I think that... I think that we shouldn't... I think that we shouldn't... Oh, you know, I mean, your mother wouldn't like it, and after all, she keeps me here. But in four years' time, I shall ask for your hand. Do you mean that? You won't forget? I promise. I swear it. Oh. 
Well, I do hope we haven't stayed too long. Not at all, not at all. Well, we're much obliged to you for coming, aren't we, my dear? Much obliged. Thank you, sir. Now, so mind much. you come to dinner this evening, or I shall be offended. On behalf of the whole family, I beg you to come, my dear. Uh, Julie, too, nine o'clock. For my two dear ones, whose name day we're celebrating. We shall have a lovely time, the whole family and all my friends. Oh, I thought they'd never go. It seems to be the hardest thing in the world for some people to know when they're not wanted. Oh, it's simply a matter of good manners, that's all. Nothing more. Strange, isn't it? How as one gets older, one wants to see fewer and fewer people. Just old friends. Oh, my dear, there are not many of us left. That's why I value your friendship, sir. All oh, right, Annette. Fewer and fewer old friends. They seem to drop by the wayside as one journeys through life. Vera, why don't you go and join your sister? Of course, Mama, if I'm not wanted. Well, it can't be healthy for a young girl to be constantly in the company of older women. What were we saying, my dear? Fewer and fewer friends. Ah, yes, fewer and fewer. How one values more and more those that are left. What would I have done all these years without you? Oh, don't let's speak of that. Life treats all of us very differently. How true that is. For some people, life seems so easy. For others, it's just struggle, struggle, struggle all the way. Well, my life hasn't been easy, as you know. No bed of roses. I know. Wealth has its problems, my dear. In some ways, no less than poverty. Can be a worry and a strain. Oh, don't I know. If you haven't got it, you wonder where it's coming from. But if you have, you wonder where it's going. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, don't Absolutely I know. Absolutely well, Haven't I seen both? <laughs> poverty and wealth. If we go on at this rate, how long do you think we can last? Oh, we're wealthy, yes, but we don't draw from a bottomless purse. This house, how much do you think it costs to keep up? Don't tell me, my love. I live under its roof and I'm very grateful. I'd rather not know. <laughs> ah, he's too good-natured, too easy-going. Even when we live in the country, there's no end to it. Theatricals, hunting, shooting, God knows what else. I was there, I have to say it, you're equally to blame, my dear. You too are too good-natured. But haven't you kept my son all these years and brought him up as one of your own? Oh, that's nothing. Another mouth to feed. What does it cost us? Besides, Boris and Nikolai get along so well. Now, do you know what I marvel at, Annette, more than anything? Mm -hmm. At you. The way you'll go to the ends of the earth for that boy. Posting off to Petersburg alone, seeing important ministers. Oh, my dear, what else can I do? God grant you'll never know what it is to be left a widow with a son you adore and no means to help him. One learns a great many things. Persistence. Mm. One learns that. Now, I don't care what they think of me. If I want to see someone, I just keep on calling until they grant me an interview. What do I? Well, I think it's wonderful. Are you really going to Petersburg to get Boris transferred to the guards? Oh, dear, I must. I mean, in his present regiment, how far can he go, even as an officer? Oh, he must be in the guards. There's no other way. Then I am sure, old friend, you will manage it. Manage it, yes. But what then? What if I do? What of his uniform? How do I pay for it? Now, unless Count Zuhal helps us, I... I shan't be able to equip Boris, even if I get him transferred. But surely he'll leave him something, after all, a godson. Oh, listen, Natalie. I didn't want that harpy and her daughter to think otherwise, but... Frankly, he's probably forgotten he was a godfather. Oh. However, that's why I've ordered the carriage. I shall take Boris with me to see him. You know, I don't think he's as far gone as they say. I shall tell him straight out how things are. <laughs> Good. I've given orders. No more visitors. Oh, where are you off to, my dear? To pay my respects to Count Vizukov. Ah, well, if he's better and a peer can leave the house, ask him to come and have dinner this evening. Hmm? 
Uh, I mean Pierre, naturally. <laughs> he used to visit the house, you know, yes. dance with the children. Yes, yeah. do. Now don't forget. I won't. Oh, she's a brave woman, Ilya. Sometimes I think we don't know how fortunate we are. <sighs> How's your headache? What headache? <laughs> Now, how did you get that stain? Mm. Oh, you're so careless when you eat. Mm. Ilya, I have a little request. Oh, how little? Oh, poor Anna. She tries so hard for Boris. Do you know she's going to Petersburg to try to get him transferred to the guard? Oh, Boris is a fine fellow. He'll do very well. She'll do it, too. She'll get him transferred. You need some money? A little. You know, we've been overspending a great deal. The steward tells oh, me... Oh, well, we can't afford it. Now, who said that? Did I say that? Well, money can't. Money. How much sorrow it causes in this world. You're too soft-hearted. Any little sadness upsets you. <laughs> but not today. I've given orders. My pet is not to be upset. Anything she wants, she can have. Now, how much? hundred? Two hundred. I need five. Well, if it's five, it's five. <laughs> I'll have it for you this afternoon. Mm. My little countess must be happy. You're too easygoing, you know, my love. What do you want me to say? You can't have it? You could at least ask me what I want it for. Perhaps cut me down a little. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I'll cut you down. Today you can have what you like. How's that? Mm. Now, go into the kitchen and get that stain taken out. Oh, Boris, I, I want you to be affectionate and attentive to him. He is your godfather, after all. But your future depends on it. I just know. Nothing but humiliation will come of this visit. Dear, you promised me. Oh, Prince. Prince. In what melancholy circumstances we meet again. How long is it? How is our dear invalid? Not too good, I fear. I'm told he's seeing no one. He's very bad. Oh, how terrible. How terrible. This is my son, Boris. Prince Vasily Kuragin, dear. Or in the infantry, I see. I'm awaiting orders to join my regiment, Your Excellency, but I'm hoping to be transferred to the guard. Are you living with your mother? I'm living at Count Rostov's. Ilya Rostov, who married Natalia Shinchina. You remember? Yes, yes, of course I remember. I never could understand how she could marry such an absurd fellow. But a very good man, Prince. And what do the doctors say? They're with him now. I want to thank him personally for all his kindness in the past to me and to Boris. Uh, Boris is his godson, you know. I shall wait a while. Perhaps he'll rally. Don't you think such an interview would be something of an ordeal? Oh, I'm used to suffering, Prince. Well, what did the doctor say? He's about the same. Oh, Katish, I hardly recognized you. I've just arrived. I've come to offer my services as a nurse. My dear, you look terribly tired. I can imagine what you've been through. Boris, I shall go in and see your godfather. And you may find Pierre. Oh, don't forget to invite him to the Rostovs for dinner this evening. They asked him. Or perhaps you'd rather he didn't go. Well, on the contrary. I shall be only too glad to be relieved of that young man. He drives me demented, hanging about here. The Count has never once asked for him. England's day is over. My troops have crossed the Channel and are at this very moment pounding at the gates of London. Mr. Pitt, as a traitor to his country and the rights of men, I sentence to be... Oh, well, hello. This uh, I was just... How oh, nice. Do you remember me? 
Yes, of course, of course. I came with my mother to see the Count, but it seems he's too ill. Yes, that's right. That's right. Count Rostov begs you to come and dine this evening. Of course, uh, Count Rostov, you must be his son, um, Ilya. Uh, no, I'm Boris Trubetskoy, and it's Count Rostov, whose name is Ilya. His son's name is Nikolai. Nikolai, yes, of course. Uh, oh, what am I thinking of? One has so many relations in Moscow. Well, 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 well. well. <laughs> What do you think of the Boulogne expedition? Do you think Napoleon will get across the channel? Well, I'm afraid I know nothing about the expedition. Here in Moscow, we hear only gossip. And at the moment, it's mainly about you and your father. Really? I say, uh... Well, I didn't know that. What are they saying? They're wondering who is going to inherit all the money. Yes, I suppose they would. Yes. It must seem to you that everyone is trying to get some of it. I want you to know, if you were to include my mother and me among such people, you'd be mistaken. Well, good heavens, do you suppose I'm concerned No, I, I just wanted it plain, that's all. Now, will you come this evening? I say you're an amazing fellow. You must have thought I was... Uh, uh, no, of course, I, I understand you. I, I understand completely and perfectly. Well, what you've just said is first rate. I don't think I would have done it. Nor would I. Do you know I've not been in once to see the Count? Well, he hasn't asked for me. Do you care? No. No, not a bit. Or do I? He sent me to Petersburg to choose a career, but, um, well... Well, you'll come, then. Come? Why? To the Rostovs. Yes, of course, of course. Well, goodbye. Bye. Well, oh, my dear, he's in a dreadful state. You'd hardly recognize him, he's so bad. He knows no one. Oh, you don't surprise me. Who else was there? Oh, Seely and Katish and the other nieces, that's all. But they'll all be gathering like vultures. Relatives of friends, you'll see. It's disgusting. Oh, so tasteless. I stayed only a minute, but I shall go back there tonight. I shall do my duty and sit up with him. My dear, they're hopeless, all of them. I can see that. Oh, he can't be left to them. Was Pierre there? Uh, yes, yes, he's coming to dinner oh. this evening. Now, how does he stand? With the will? Well, who knows? I mean, being illegitimate, special dispensation has to be granted if he's to inherit. But has the Count asked for it? Who knows again? Well, it's anybody's guess. Now, Anna, please, for heaven's sake, don't refuse me. It's for Boris's equipment. <laughs> oh, no, oh, friend, no, please, I beg you. Oh, money, 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 so sordid, so very sordid. No. You've been such a good oh, friend no, to no, me. No, no, it's nothing, nothing. <laughs> I had it and you didn't. If things had been reversed, in <laughs> any way. Boris will look splendid. <laughs> splendid. Probably too anyway, really. Now, it's the day of the 
The Charles Manifesto has already secured the Petersburg. I tell you, I've seen it. We shall get war in the middle of weeks. Yeah, well, it's a wrong mess of fish, that's all I can say. Well, then it would be better if you said nothing at all, sir. Because our needs are also bought to struggle against Bonaparte. And why the devil should we have to fight Bonaparte, eh? He settled Austria. He will settle us. That is the reason, sir. The Emperor said it in the manifesto. We cannot use with indifference the advance of Bonaparte. You Germans, you're all professional soldiers. All you want to do is fight. Our country is in danger, sir. My country is mine as well. And I'm ready to die for I dare you. I will do anything Mama? <laughs> what is it? We'd like to know what we're going to have for sweet. <laughs> you'll see what I'll do to you if I come down there. We'd like to know what's for sweet, please. <laughs> Whatever it is, there'll be none for you. Cossack, you sit down and behave yourself. Is it ice cream? <laughs> yes, <laughs> carrot ice. <laughs> Carrot ice. How do you know? Are your heads so big you know everything? Well, then, who eats carrot ice? The donkeys eat carrot ice. <laughs> That's why they made so <laughs> We are having pineapple ice. So we are. <laughs> Must be moved into the bed. Fetch some other servants. Hey, Biama cuisine. How is he? No change. He won't survive a third stroke. You know, Katish, that you and my wife are his only direct heirs. Ah, it's painful, I know. Still, one must talk. I never cease praying to God that he be merciful. Still, we must be ready. I've sent for Pierre, you know. Well, he asked for him. What does he want him for? He's illegitimate. He can't inherit anything. I've tried to explain to you before. All the old Count had to do was to write a letter to the Tsar begging him to make Pierre legitimate. Now, I'll tell you something. The letter was written but never sent. The only question is then, was it destroyed or is it among his papers? If among his papers, Pierre becomes legitimate, I have it on the highest legal authority. You inherit nothing. Oh, that's gratitude. That's the recognition that people get who've sacrificed everything for him. I'll tell you who's to blame. That woman who was here earlier, Princess Drubetskaya, it was she who came here months ago, talking to him, setting him against us. But there's still time, my dear. If the letter were written, it was obviously done in a moment of anger or illness, afterwards forgotten. Our duty is clear. If you know where it is, we must take the letter to him, ask him if he wants it destroyed. But he can't speak. But he can make a sign, don't you see? However slight. I wouldn't want him to die knowing he'd done something he'd regretted. The letter is in a portfolio in his room. Shall we take it to him now? No. Let him see, Pierre. I wouldn't want people to suggest we try to influence him against Pierre. <laughs> If I were in the cavalry, I should not get more than 200 rubles every four months. But in the infantry, as a captain, I get 230 a month. But the infantry is such a plodding career. The infantry is such a plodding career. Not at all. Casualties are higher, so promotions are much quicker. I can also save. Put something aside for the happy day I settle down again at it. I'm sure you'd get on whatever regiment you were in. Die for We must argue. We must simply die to head. Here, here! You agree, young men? Absolutely. What? What we Russians must conquer or die? Bonaparte must be taught a lesson. 
He'll know the difference the day he meets a Russian hussar. Yeah, yeah. I think what you just said was splendid. Is it from your father? You must go at once, my dear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It must happen. It must happen. Yes. Yes, that's how it is. It must be. Yes. Allow me, madame, to know what is and what is not to be done. My dear, you cannot take this into him now. He needs quiet. Will you let go? His soul has been prepared. He doesn't want to discuss such worldly matters. Oh, Pierre, my dear, come here. He'll not be one too many in this family council. Eh, Prince? Why don't you speak to her? Why do you keep silent? This is outrageous. Anna, let go at once. I will assume full responsibility myself. But, Prince, this is not the time to trouble him. Vile creature, let go. How dare you, how dare you, you vile woman. The Count is dead. What are you thinking of? Quarreling in here while a man dies in the next room? God to forgive you. You must see that these are put among your father's papers. Of course, they may be of no consequence, but one never knows. Sonia! 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 Oh, Sonia! Oh, Sonia, what's the matter? Oh, oh darling, please don't cry. Please don't. Mikulai is going away and I love him and he hasn't looked at me all evening. Oh, so Sonia. <laughs> oh, Sonia, he loves you. I know he does. He does. Even if he does, Mama won't let him. She'll say that I'm spoiling his career and that I'm heartless and ungrateful. But I'm not. I'm not. She's been so good to me ever since I was a child. And I love all of you. Really, I do, and I'd never do anything that would hurt you. Oh, Sonia. But Vera said Mama would never let him marry me because we're cousins and that he'd marry Julie. You saw the way he kept looking at her. Sonia, you mustn't believe her. Please don't. Well, do you remember what we were saying the other evening after supper? You and, and me and Boris and Nikolai... Well, we settled how it was going to be. We settled it. Now he hasn't forgotten. Not Nikolai. Oh. 
Oh, darling, please don't cry. It'll all come out all right. I know it will. Do you think so? Really and truly? Really and truly? Oh, oh. Sonia, that fat Pierre who sat opposite me is so funny. He just makes me want to laugh. Oh, come on. They're going to drink Mama's health. Oh, Sonia, I feel so happy. Dear friends, dear friends, who have kindly done me and my family the honor of dining with us this evening. Drink with me, please. The good health and happiness of my dear, dear wife and of my darling mischief down there, whose name day she shares today. May they have long life and happiness. And may this day remind them the rest of the year how truly cherished they are by us all. Well, 